let w equals square root of three plus i over two and z equals negative one plus i root three over two, where i is equal to square root of negative one. Find the number of ordered pairs R, S of positive integers not exceeding 100 that satisfy the equation I times W to the power of R is equal to Z to the power of S. Okay, so what, what do we have here? We have, um, we have W equals, um, let me write this slightly differently, root three over two plus one half I. You have Z is equal to negative one over two plus root three over two i. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna plot w and z out on the complex plane. So I'm gonna draw a complex plane. We have our real axis and our imaginary axis. And you draw the um, unit circle, which looks something like this. Um, it, it has radius one. So this, this over here is one on the real axis. This is I and where is W gonna be? W is gonna be, um, well, ha have real part root three over two and imaginary part one half. So I'd imagine it would be somewhere around here. Um, so I'm gonna draw a W and actually the um, the radius from the unit circle to W, and you can verify for yourself that W is on the unit circle by trying to take its magnitude. And I'm also gonna show you why exactly it in just a moment. Um, Z is negative one half plus root three over two I, so somewhere up here. And the nice thing about complex numbers is that aside from writing it like uh, real plus imaginary times I, W is also equal to the cosine of 30 degrees plus I sine of 30 degrees. Remember, cosine of 30 degrees is root three over two, sine of 30 degrees is one half. And if you want to write it in radians because it's more useful, cosine of pi over six plus I sine pi over six. Similarly, Z is equal to cosine of 120 degrees, which is two pi over three radians, plus I sine of pi over, two pi over three radians. Um, so this is how you express W and Z in, um, in terms of cosines and sines. Um, another really cool thing about imaginary numbers is you can write it as E to the power of I times pi over six. And this one is e to the i times two pi over three. And actually you see that um, this angle over here um, from the real axis to w is pi over six. And this angle to z is two pi over three. So you can see that um, e to the power of i times pi over six is just a rotation of pi over six radians. Um, and we're gonna use that to our advantage um, because one property of complex numbers is let's say you have um, two numbers on the complex plane and um, let's say you have e to the i um, times a, some real number a and e to the i b um, for some real number b. Um, and those two complex numbers are on the unit circle and they're rotations of a and b radians and um, if you want to multiply them together, you get e to the i times a times e to the i b. And using exponent properties, this is equal to e to the i a plus i b, which is equal to e to the i a plus b. So in essence, you're rotating a plus b. So um, if you if you're gonna let, let's let's say you have two complex numbers, and I'm gonna do this one in green these two complex numbers and this angle is A and this angle over here is B, then their, their product is gonna be a rotation of A plus B. So somewhere around here, the product is gonna be a rotation of A plus B. Okay, so now that we have all that established, let's dive into our real problem. So we have that I times W to the power of R is equal to z to the power of s. So let's write this in exponential form. So 
um, I, which is um, if you take the rotation, that's a pi over two rotation. I is going to be e to the I pi over two. So what do you have on the left-hand side? You have e to the I pi over two times W to the R equals Z to the S. And really the thing with complex numbers is that um, they can be well complex because although W is equal to e to the I pi over six, you also know that it, it can equal other things. Like for example, if I rotate around once and then come back, that's one full rotation plus pi over six. So um, that would be um, 13 pi over six, this, this rotation over here, um, that's 390 degrees. And W also, you, you could go the other way around and um, rotate like this, and that's negative 11 pi over six. And you, so you have to be really careful because W isn't just um, e to the i pi over six, it's also other things like, for example, um, this. This 13 pi over six thing is annoying because what you what you have now is you can't you can't just substitute w for e to the i pi over six. You have to say w could be e to the i pi over six, e to the i 13 pi over six, e to the i 25 pi over six, and so on and so forth. So this is where you have to be careful because um, in all of these instances, what I've just showed is that w is equal to um, w to the power of 13, which is equal to w to the power of 25, which is equal to w to the power of 11, because you see here that e to the i power of 6 to the power of 13, oh, this should be negative, sorry, e to the i power of 6 to the power of 13 by exponent properties is e to the i times 13 pi over 6. And e to the i pi over 6 to the power of negative 11 is e to the i negative 11 pi over six. And the reason you can do this is because um, you have e to the i two pi is equal to one because you take rotation of two pi, you get one again. So you can multiply e to the i pi over six by e to the i two pi and um, you know exponents add. So e to the i pi over six plus i two pi is your gives you your 13 pi over six. So Basically what we're seeing here is W is equal to W to the 13 equals W to the 25 equals W to the negative 11. And in general, you could equate this to W to the power of one plus 12K for some integer K positive, negative, or zero. So, so that, that's why you have to be careful. And so what, what, what then how, how are we gonna ever solve this problem? Well, this, this this is where the fun begins because um, okay so so in essence what are you doing you're taking w to the r whatever this r may be and you're rotating it 90 degrees um, so w, w to the r so um, take this um, this is a 90 degree rotation and you're gonna have to end up with a power of z and the nice thing about z is because e to the i two pi over three um, you take z squared, you're rotating another 2 pi over 3. Um, you go somewhere over here. Um, and this, so this point over here is z squared. z cubed, you rotate another 120 degrees, 2 pi over 3 radians. And it gets you way back to this origin. So, a power of z will always be one of these three. Um, the, one the 120 degree mark, the 240 degree mark, or the zero degree mark. And because of that, um, you only have to look at a few possibilities for w. Because if z to the s is at the 120 degree mark, no matter how many rotations you've gone around before you get there, then you have w to the power of r, you rotate at 90 degrees. So w to the power of r must be at the 30 degree mark. So r could be 1, 13, and so on and so forth, because those are the ones that get you over here.
Um, and similarly, when z to the s is at the 240 degree mark, w to the r will be at the 150 degree mark, and then you just rotate it 90 degrees, so somewhere about here. And if z is at the zero marker, you can also call it the 360 degree mark, then w to the r is at the 270 mark, which is this um, negative imaginary axis over here. So your question becomes, okay, how many ways can I get r and s such that one of these three possible combinations occurs. And so, so, so how, how, are, how are we ever gonna count that? Well, okay, so, so what we do is we're gonna count the number of Rs that could possibly get W to this 30 degree mark. So like one, um, W to the power of one gets you here. Then you have to rotate 360 degrees, which is W to the 12. So your next one becomes W to the 13 and W to the 25. And then if you go around three rotations, um, one, two, three, um, sorry, that got messy. If you go three rotations and get back here, um, you get W to the 37 and so on and so forth. So you can see how many ways is there for WR to hit the 30 degree mark, um, one, 13, 25, all the way up to the, um, the maximum you could possibly get, not exceeding 100. So W will never be able to exceed 100. So you go all the way up to 97. And how many numbers are on this list? Well, I like the way I like to calculate it is let's add 11 to each of these terms. So you get 12, 24, 36, dot, 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 108. And let's go a step farther. Let's divide each of these terms by 12, one, two, three, dot, 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 up to nine. So there are nine ways W to the R could hit that 30 degree mark. Now, how many ways can Z to the S hit the 120 degree mark? Well, let's think about it. If, if Z cubed, um, Z cubed was equal to um, one, you, you rotate it like this. If Z cubed was equal to one, then Z to the four would have to equal Z. And so would Z to the seven. And so with z to the 10 and so on and so forth. And you can see that those are the ones that get you there. So you need to count how many possible powers, how many possible values of s. Well, you have z to the 1, z to the 4, z to the 7, et cetera, up to 100 all work. And how many numbers are on this list? You could do a similar procedure. Let's add two to each of these elements, 369, dot, 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 102. Divide each of these by three, one, two, three, dot, 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 34. So there are 34, um, there are 34 possible values of S. So it's great. And, you're, and you can do a similar thing to each of, um, to, to each of the other ones. Well, how, how many ways are there for W to the power of R to be um, hit the 150 degree mark? Well, you have to go 530 degree rotation. So W to the five is the first one that works. Um, so let me write down W to the five, and then you have to multiply by W to the 12, which is one to get to the next one and W to the 29 and so on and so forth all the way up to, well, the last one is going to be W to the 89. There are, if you count the number of elements in this list, you find there are eight of them. Um, Z to the, Z to the S is 240 for 33 of these. You can do the exact same thing over and over again. I'm going to omit the steps because I've already done it a few times. W to the R becoming 270 will happen for eight values of R and Z to the S being right at the real axis will happen 33 times. So how many ways are there for this first case to happen? Well, um, since these two are, events are independent, you just have to multiply them nine times 34. Similarly, the number of ways for the second case to happen is eight times 33. And the third one, eight times 33 as well. So you just add all three of these numbers. You get nine times 34 is 306. Eight times 33 is 264. Eight times 33 is 264. And this sums up to 834. So we are done. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.